when we asked them what are the top four applications that you're actually looking to drive more bandwidth and capacity in order to respond to this economic downturn, number one was telepresence. Number two was data center consolidation. Number three was teleworking. And the fourth one, depending on the ver vertical segment, is how do they improve their application performance to respond faster to customers, whether it's in the healthcare, whether it's in the financial a vertical segment as an example. But one of the key factors for me that came out when I was preparing is, is Gardner did actually a study that looked at basically the impact of telepresence. And what their predictions are saying is by 2012, 2.1 million seats in the airlines will actually be replaced by telepresence. That's equivalent to $3.5 billion per year in an impact in that industry. So if you think that this industry is difficult, think what they're going to go through if technology is going to continue to drive and really come out with new economic models which allow us to improve overall um, bandwidth and overall customer experience. The other interesting fact that I want to make sure is that this new bandwidth thrust and leveraging um, broadband is not just a business thrust, but it's also a government trust. It's interesting to hear Ofcom, which is basically the equivalent to FCC in, in the UK, uh, Ed Richards basically said one of the main thrusts as part of their stimulus package is going to be investment in infrastructure. You heard the same thing in the US with the uh, Obama again with the stimulus package saying infrastructure for, for broadband, whether it's in rural, is that going to be absolutely critical in order to leverage that? And again, from Mr. Goel, you heard it, is one of the main thrusts in the India government to get, to, um, to get broadband across. This example is absolutely, to me, was eye-opening. Talking about, again, new business model. So imagine if you, do, you could decide to do a broadcast, global broadcast, set up about an, with one million viewers across the world without having to negotiate with a national broadcaster in terms of fees, in terms of synchronization, in terms of timing. And imagine that those one million users can actually be live with you real time in communication and they are now becoming part of your show. And that's exactly what Oprah Winfrey did a year ago and started this first event called New Earth, where you've now got 139 countries participating, a million people on, 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 the, on the show, and 35 million downloads to date to media devices, and each filed one gig. So who would have thought that Oprah would be impacting this business? But it's important to understand that new economic models, new economic reality forces people to think differently. And if someone can start pushing content globally and broadcast the content globally and be successful in bringing a million users, what will be the impact onto the network if people continue to leverage that? Let's move to the second point. Devices and connectivity move from nice to have to necessity. Today's world is about real time, is about world event, immediate information. And in personal connectivity required, is required to stay relevant and informed. Let's just take some quick examples on how important information now is being available. Jan, Jan 14th, first internet inauguration, 12 million people accessing the web every second. 60% uh, bandwidth spike in that day alone. And when you look at CNN, they actually had the uh, biggest record of users downloading their web, their, their streaming video was 5 million users per second. In the case of the, on Jan 14th, they went up to 12. Again, putting in fact a new model, a new way to get informed. People want to get informed, they want to get it automatically. But the other important aspect for me as about personal relevance is employment. As an example, 10 years ago, if you were looking for a job, you would probably go on paper, newspapers to get informed. And gradually, 
new, steps, new websites became the norm. Monster.com is an example where people would go in and, and, uh, and get information about jobs. What's now interesting is, according to IT Global Com, more than, less than 70, about 70 to 80 percent of the jobs are actually not posted anymore. And only 5 percent, less than 5 percent of the jobs are actually posted on websites like Monster.com. So where do people get that information? It's on the new social web. LinkedIn, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter. That's how people now are getting connected. That's how people are getting into relevancy and making sure that uh, they continue to get uh, more information. And the last point you got it on the, on the right hand side is how people are actually going to, knowing that their customers are connected, what are they going to do to drive new uh, examples of new application? And Reuters is actually going to leverage, for those who are familiar, Reuters has this for their business customer, used to have it basically terminals that get all the relevant, it's pretty static, but relevant information around the, the, the markets globally. They're now going to transfer that to make it a video service that people can actually get that information real time and, and leveraging, again, video as a better media than just text. What's the impact going forward to mobile broadband? So today in the world, we've got a 4 billion users' devices that are actually on 6.5 billion of the population. But what's really important in the message here is the fact that the broadband access, mobile broadband access, has a CAGR, an annual growth, of greater than 70%. And what's important to understand is they may not be phone. This could be phone, this could be TV, this could be online gaming, this could be machine to machine. And again, driving new business models for carriers where they can push content now, video streamings, information to the handsets, to the users. The third one, high definition video. And again, I don't know how it comes across in, in the back, but you see the difference between the ground and the enemy of what on the, the top left you see the, uh, the, the, the quality versus the bottom right between high definition and a lower quality video. But it really, high definition for me, has started a customer quality revolution. And my prediction is anything less than high quality video or high definition video will be unacceptable in 24 months or less than 24 months. And it's driving a whole new appliance market, a parallel appliance market that is all about high definition video and high quality video. If you buy a TV today, a high definition TV, you'll be interested to see the way they're going to sell this to you is not about obviously the quality of the image, but the next step will be about the connectors in the back. It used to be about how many coax connectors you have. Now it's about Ethernet jacks, it's about HDMI, it's about DVI, it's about all sorts of high quality interconnected capability for your video. And think about now the fact that we're about to introduce 3D high definition, which doubles the bandwidth again. 